In the near future, the world is filled with hope and disaster as humanity explores space to find intelligent life beyond Earth. Hey there, welcome to Minute Recap. Today I'm going to show you a 2019 American science fiction film called Ad Astra. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The opening scene begins with a 52-year-old space astronaut, Major Roy McBride, sending a video message for a psychological evaluation before going for a space walk outside the international space antenna that is right above the Earth. He is so devoted to his work that his estranged wife, Eve, decides to divorce him because he is too preoccupied with his job as an astronaut. During his psychological evaluation, he states that he has always wanted to be an astronaut to help mankind. After completing his psychological evaluation, Roy makes his way outside the space antenna in an orange space suit high above Earth. He ascends down on a ladder to do his assigned task. Roy was tasked to repair a robotic arm that had malfunctioned on Sector 93. The massive international space antenna was constructed and funded by the government for contacting extraterrestrial life in the solar system and beyond. Roy spots the malfunctioned robotic arm on Sector 93 and proceeds to do some repairs. As he was about to descend, suddenly, a massive mysterious power surge from an unknown origin strikes the international space antenna causing explosions. Upon Roy seeing his colleagues falling off the structure, he decides to cut the power by pulling the power lever but his plans didn't work out. Seeing a series of explosions heading towards him, Roy decides to let go off the railing and hurdles towards Earth on a free fall at great speeds. Fortunately, Roy calms himself and gets control of the situation despite falling from 100,000 feet above Earth. Equipped with a parachute, he manages to deploy it on time. But unfortunately his parachute gets damaged by the falling debris from the earlier explosions from the space antenna. He manages to land in a field and is found by paramedics before he loses consciousness. Back at his place, Roy sees more mysterious power surges happening across the planet on the news, threatening the future of mankind. After surviving an incident on a massive space antenna caused by one of these surges, Major Roy McBride receives a message from the US Spacecom, informing him to attend a top-secret meeting that will be held at Building 91 Vandersteen Base. Upon arriving, Roy is brought in to meet with his superiors at the US Space Command known as Spacecom. Lieutenant General Rivas, the Director of Spacecom Special Ops and General Vogel, the Head of Security and General Stroud, receives and welcomes Roy at the meeting. During the meeting, his superiors start by praising his ability to remain calm in tight situations. General Stroud later asks Roy if the rumor is true that he never had a pulse over 80 during any of his spacewalks, skywalks and surprisingly even the most recent fall at the International Space Antenna. Lieutenant General Rivas, the director of Spacecom Special Ops asks Roy if he was married or had any children. He replies that he did not want to subject others in his dangerous job. Roy is informed by his superiors that the source of the surges has been traced to the Lima Project near Neptune. The Lima Project was created 29 years earlier to search for other intelligent life under Dr. Clifford McBride's leadership who apparently happens to be his father. Roy is told that Clifford McBride and his crew never returned and seemingly disappeared 16 years prior without a trace. He is shown a spectrogram image of Neptune releasing cosmic ray bursts of high-energy particles. It is emphasized by General Stroud that the uncontrolled chain reaction releasing antimatter could possibly destroy all life on Earth. General Stroud informs Roy that they believe his father, Dr. Clifford McBride may still be alive. Roy's thoughts appears to race after hearing that his father might still be alive. This is the first time he has shown signs of anxiety. Roy is instructed by his superiors to take a top-secret mission of traveling to Mars to send a secure personal message from Mars to the Lima Project in hopes that his father Clifford will respond. He finally accepts the mission and he then looks at video messages that Clifford sent him talking about the Lima mission. Roy muses about the past watching at an old recording message of his father, who is optimistic about finding new intelligent life in space. He just flew through Jupiter and finished by saying, I love you, my son. Roy is accompanied by Colonel Thomas Prude, Clifford's old friend and associate on their mission. While having a conversation with Colonel Thomas Prude, Roy can't figure out why his father cut off communication with the control center at first. But Prude, who has been an astronaut for 31 years, suggests that Clifford might be hiding from them because he thinks space exploration might be used as a means of escape. Roy, who is renowned for his ability to remain composed under extreme pressure, shows little emotion in reaction to the possibility that his father is still alive. The two must first head to the moon and head for a ship that will take them to Mars. Before heading off to the moon, Roy sends a video message to his estranged wife Eve but he didn't have the courage to send it so he deleted it. He is then evaluated for his mental and emotional state in his room and gets an approval for the lunar trip. The scene cuts to Roy and Prout boarding a commercial flight to the moon and Captain Lou welcomes them aboard. And the futuristic spacecraft takes off from the station heading towards the moon. 
the moon has since expanded into an unexplored territory, where humans engage in conflict over mining territories that could lead to warfare. When Roy and Prude arrive at the moon, problems occur since his connecting flight to Mars which is situated in a disputed conflict zone on the far side of the moon. They are then escorted to the Space Command Lunar Base by U.S. military personnel led by Lt. Willie Levant. They are ambushed by scavenger pirates on their way to the base via lunar rovers, and most of the group is killed after getting shot by the scavengers. Roy's suit gets punctured after being grazed by a bullet, but luckily, he is able to close it. The entire escort crew is killed except for Roy and Prout. Roy calls for desperate backup after seeing the situation getting out of hand. Roy shoots at the attacker, and his rover flies across a crater before landing safely. Luckily Roy's emergency call was heard and the Space Command Lunar Base fired two missiles killing the attackers and neutralizing the threat and they eventually made it to the Lunar Base. However, a dying Prude suffers cardiac problems and says he will not make it to Mars, and is then placed into intensive care after an emergency surgery. This made Roy with no other option but to proceed by himself to Mars. Before Roy leaves for Mars, Colonel Prude hands him over a drive that contains classified information about the true intentions of the Lima Project mission. Roy joins the Cepheus crew, Captain Lawrence Tanner, Donald Stanford, Franklin Yashida, and Lorraine Devers. The crew aboard the Cepheus spaceship then head to Mars. On the ship, as mood stabilizers are distributed, Roy plugs in the drive and it is revealed that the Space Command has detected a possible SOS signal from the Lima Project crew, indicating that Clifford intentionally disabled all communications and Spacecom assumed that Clifford might have lost all control when they got to Neptune. As a result, if Roy fails to reach his father, the Lima Project station will have to be annihilated in order to stop the unexplained surges. On their way to Mars, the Cepheus crew receives a distress signal from a Norwegian biomedical research space station. Commander Tanner urges that they must investigate, despite Roy's claims that the mission comes first and other ships can respond. As the co-pilot becomes too afraid to go with Commander Tanner, Roy steps in to help the commander inspect the space station. Boarding the space station, Roy and Commander Tanner find the Norwegian Biomedical Research Space Station abandoned. The two then split up to investigate further. And when Roy loses contact with Tanner through the comms he uses his device to detect motions in the ship. To his surprise, he then finds a baboon mauling Commander Tanner. The baboons were used as test subjects in an experiment which explained their aggression towards humans. The baboon sees Roy approaching then attacks him but Roy manages to kill it by shooting it. Just as Roy is about to help Commander Tanner, another baboon attacks him. He quickly pulls the commander out and closes the hatch door releasing the pressure into the chamber, causing the baboon to explode in pieces. Roy then secures Tanner's helmet with duct tape before returning him to the Cepheus ship. Unfortunately, Tanner eventually passes away from his injuries, and the crew ejects his body into space, but Roy shows little remorse, since Commander Tanner died after the attack. Lieutenant Stanford, who was the co-pilot took the commander's position of the ship and the co-pilot's seat was assigned for Roy. As they continue their mission, Roy goes for another psychological evaluation, mentioning how the wrath he saw in the baboons reminded him of the rage he had seen in his father and himself. Roy has always had something of a fear of Clifford, and he wishes to be nothing like him. The crew finally arrives on Mars after days of traveling. While making a routine landing on Mars, another power surge hits the Cepheus ship, causing their ship's systems to shut down. On landing, the angle of the rocket gets off course. Since it has to be corrected manually, Roy needs permission from the chief pilot. He repeatedly asks for his command, but he is frozen with fear and unable to respond. When there is no more time to delay, Roy handles the situation on his own. He stabilizes the airship with calm concentration. Having landed safely on Mars, Roy comments on how he will refrain from reporting the incident when it is over. They soon arrive at the underground space comm station where they find out that it was also affected by the power surge. Here, Roy meets with the director of operations, Helen Lantos. They bring Roy in and he is tasked with recording voice messages to be sent to the Lima Project in hopes that his father, Clifford, will respond. A secure laser transmission is prepared and Roy is tasked with recording voice messages to send to the Lima Project near Neptune. He reads the messages very robotically and explains that they will offer a rescue mission, but they get no response. Roy has always known that Spacecom was using him but he doesn't have any other choice but to follow their commands. In a later recording, Roy goes off script and delivers a more sincere message to Clifford, reminiscing about their time spent together when Roy was a child. Although the crew appears to receive a response, Roy is informed that he will be returning to Earth soon and immediately removed from the mission because his personal connection to the mission is believed to pose a psychological risk to himself and the operation's success. Roy is placed in a comfort room after failing his psychological evaluation. His excitement increased his heart rate to above 80 making him failing the test. 
Inside the comfort room he is visited by Lantos, who reveals she is a native Martian and has only been once to Earth as a child. She also reveals that she is the daughter of Lima Project crew members. Then she asks Roy if he knows that there are nuclear munitions aboard the Cepheus, which would soon be leaving on a search and destroy mission to Neptune but Roy couldn't answer because he was casted out of the mission. Helen takes Roy to another area of the base and tells him everything she knows. She shows Roy a classified recording that reveals the Lima crew mutinied against Clifford in an attempt to return to Earth, but he killed all of them and eventually went insane. She also reveals that the Cepheus crew is planning to blow up Lima's base with a nuke. In the end Roy thinks he should meet with Clifford and confront him directly. Roy requests Helen to transport him to the Cepheus ship as it was about to take off in five hours. Helen leads Roy up to the shuttle. He descends a hatch tube and dives into the lake in full spacesuit, aided by a rope line. Roy just makes it onto the Cepheus before it lifts off. Inside the Cepheus ship the crew thinks Roy has trespassed and they consider him as a threat since they detect a breach in the airlock. Roy points out that he is not a threat, but his claims are ignored. Spacecom orders the team to use any means necessary to eliminate Roy. Devers and Yashida try to go after Roy. The shuttle splits, causing Devers to fly face first into the door, killing her. Yashida and Stanford then try to get Roy, and when one of the gas tanks is hit, the air becomes contaminated making the crew unable to breathe. In desperation, Roy attempts to put a breathing mask on the captain, but it is too late. The entire crew ended up suffocating and died except for Roy who had a space suit. Roy radios mission control to explain why he boarded the Cepheus ship and regretfully informs them that all crew members are deceased. Roy states that he is on his way to Neptune to destroy any remnants of the Lima project. He also turns off all the communications to avoid detection and takes command of the ship and heads to Neptune on his own. During the 79-day journey to Neptune, Roy muses about his father's relationship as well as his estranged wife, Eve. Roy places electrodes on his body and inserts a feeding tube into his stomach, supposedly to activate his muscles while in space. His mental health deteriorates as a result of the mission's isolation and stress. Roy finally approaches Neptune and finds the Lima Project base. As he is about to proceed towards the Lima base, Roy enters the nuclear codes to access the explosive. He aboards a shuttle that was attached to Cepheus and proceeds towards the Lima Project base. On his way to the Lima base, another power surge strikes and damages Roy's shuttle. When he tries to dock his shuttle, it is unable to do so since it was damaged by the surge. Therefore Roy aboards the Lima station by spacewalking and leaves his shuttle floating away into space. When Roy opens the hatch, he finds dead astronauts from the Lima crew floating inside the station and a monitor is shown playing an old school music video. He opens another hatch and comes across his father's room. He finds his father written notes and journals on Lima Project reports. Roy soon gets to the antimatter catalyst room and placed the nuclear bomb ready to activate it by setting a timer. As he was configuring the nuclear device, Roy hears someone calling out his name. It turned out to be his father Dr. Clifford McBride who he hasn't seen in many years. After a long pause, Roy says, Hi Dad, are you alone? Clifford replies that he has been alone for a long time. In their conversation, Roy states that he came to stop the power surges. Clifford further explains to Roy that the surges are coming from the ship's damaged antimatter source. The antimatter catalyst was damaged during a mutiny and he has been unable to solve it ever since. Clifford also admits to his son that he never really cared about his family and does not consider Earth as his home. Roy urges his father to go back home with him, but Clifford is still determined to prove that his project wasn't a failure. He even attempts to persuade Roy to stay with him and continue the exploration work together, but Roy is determined to bring them both back to Earth. Roy eventually leads him to his spacesuit. As they share a moment, his father says, I am proud of you, my son, for being so brave as to go alone. If they'd had more men like him, they could have gone on and found what they were looking for. His crew checked the data and found no other life out there, so they gave up. His father had captured details that had never been captured before, but beneath the beauty of the surface of these planets was nothing. Focusing so much on the life that was not there, he overlooked the beauty that was. Roy copies the data of the Lima Project data and findings then proceeds to arm the nuclear bomb by activating its timer. Fully suited up, they both proceed to leave the Lima station connected to each other by an anchoring rope. Roy asks his father to climb up with him, but instead his father attempts using the thrusters on his spacesuit, launching himself into the void of space, refusing to go back to Earth. Roy tries to save him, but Clifford refuses the help, leaving a distraught Roy to watch as his father drifts away in Neptune's orbit. Roy floats out into space and finds himself on the verge of giving up. But after thinking about Earth, he decides to return to the station. Alone, Roy manages to shove himself back onto his ship, passing through Neptune's ring while shielding himself with a piece of the Lima Project ship's hull and bringing the data acquired from the base with him. 
He returns to the Cepheus using his spacesuit thrusters, landing violently, but managed to grab an external handle. Roy sends a message to Spacecom stating that if he does not survive, they should go to great lengths to recover the remains and the data collected over all these years. As Roy departs from Neptune's orbit, the nuclear bomb went off destroying the antimatter catalysts that was causing power surges in the solar system. He uses the shock wave from the nuclear explosion to propel the ship home because he does not have enough fuel to return on his own. The Cepheus shakes as it is shot forward with tremendous speed. He finally returns to Earth's orbit after several days of travel. Now with a full-grown beard, he looks outside the shuttle window in disbelief. After a safe landing, soldiers rush to his aid as he gets out the capsule. In one last video message, Roy reflects on what the mission proved to him, which is that it seems that humans are the only known intelligent life out there. Roy returned to Earth with a renewed feeling of optimism. He finds himself with a renewed desire to reconnect with those closest to him, including her wife. They are seen meeting up to get coffee. Roy closes his message by vowing to live in love from now on. The end. Please consider subscribing for more content like this and hit the like button. It really helps the channel out. Leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.